Hi and welcome to this tutorial. In our previous tutorial, we saw that Hibernate provides an implementation of cache by default when we're using the session object. And uh, if inside a single session, you get the same object twice, it does not result in two separate queries. Whereas if you open a new session and then get the same object in the new session, then it's gonna fetch data from the database and it's gonna return in a query. So this is a first level optimization that Hibernate does. As long as you're in a single session, you don't have to worry about making multiple queries to the same object, it's not gonna result in queries if you do a session.get every time. We also looked at another way in which we can configure the cache, which is the second level cache. So apart from this default implementation of cache in the session object, Hibernate also gives us the option of configuring a second level of cache. And this cache is gonna be, you know, it can be used across different sessions. So in that case, when we use a second level cache, the scenario that we you know we wrote in our earlier tutorial, the opening of a session, getting an object, closing a session, then opening another session and getting the same object. Now what should happen is once we have the second level cache, this should not result in a query to the database. What should happen is when uh, it tries to see, okay, it's not there in the session because it's a new session, then what it should ideally do is it should go look up at the second level cache and in the second level cache, the object will be there and it's gonna pull up from that cache. So let's say we run this. Now we have two selects. So, uh, you know, once we configure the second level cache, ideally what should happen is there should still be only one select, even though we are doing a session.get in a different session. Okay, so in order to configure the second level cache, there are a few configuration changes we need to do. The first thing we need to do is open up the hibernate.cfg.xml. This is the uh, configuration XML for uh, Hibernate. Note that there is this element over here which is called cache.provider class and then it has been set to org.hibernate.cache.no cache provider and the comment says disable the second level cache so that's what we, that's happening right now we have disabled the second level cache and uh, there is no second level cache happening so this is the default uh, configuration that we have imported what we can do is we can change this configuration in order to implement the second level cache now what would be the value over here so this value would be the class of the cache implementer or the cache provider now in order to find out what the name of the class is we need to look at the classes that are available in org.hibernate.cache package so let's have a look at that now if you open up the hibernate jar see here there is this package org.hibernate.cache if you expand this you see that there are a few classes over here and uh, one of the classes we have here is the no cache provider dot class and this is what we have you know this is what we have configured here which means that there is actually no cache in place so what we can do is we can change it to some of the you know providers that hibernate comes up with with default one of them is this eh cache and uh, one of them is the os cache for this tutorial i'll be using the eh cache implementation so uh, we'll follow along with the steps needed to configure eh cache but then you can configure any of the other caches also there are some uh, caches that come by default and you can get more details about that in the hibernate documentation so in order to configure eh cache as our cache provider so what i need to do is i need to provide the name of the cache provider class this is not the actual class name each of these caches come with a provider class along with it see eh cache has a eh cache provider and os cache has a os cache provider and so on so we will use the provider's name over here so i will specify the name of this cache provider over here so I will change this from a no cache provider to a eh cache provider. Okay, so now we have set what is the cache provider, but what we also need to do is we need to tell Hibernate to explicitly switch on the second level cache because by default it's switched off. So for that, I add another property name equals the property is cache dot use 
second level cache and I'll set it to true. So what we're doing here is first we are enabling the second level cache. We're telling Hypernate that we want to use the second level cache. The second thing we are doing is we are providing the class name of the implementer of that second level cache, which is the ehcache provider. Now that we are using ehcache provider, what we need to do is, okay, first let me change this uh, comment here because that's no longer valid. Okay, now this is our second level cache configuration. I'll save this. Now, in order to use the second level cache that we have uh, mentioned over here, what I'll do is I'll go to the ehcache site and I'll download the ehcache jars so that I have the latest jars available in my class path. So I've actually gone ahead and done just that. I have uh, the ehcache downloaded over here. Uh, it's available at ehcache.org. So now what I'll do is I will add this to the class path. So I have my Hibernate uh, library over here. So I'll go to properties user libraries. So in this Hibernate library, what I'll do is I'll say add jar and I have this ehcache folder over here, which I've downloaded. Inside this ehcache folder, there's a lib folder. So I will use this ehcache core dot jar. So this might be different depending on the version that you have downloaded, but you know it's better to take the latest version. I include this and press OK. So now my Hibernate library has the eh cache and it can provide the caching service. So what Hibernate will do is now that we have the cache provider that Hibernate has included inside it by default, Hibernate will use this eh cache jar that I have added to the library and it'll use that uh, jar to provide the caching services. Okay, so now that we have configured the, you know, the configuration file in Hibernate, the second step that we need to do is to actually configure the entities that we want to be cached. Not all the entities by default are cached unless we mention an entity as cacheable, it does not get cached. So since we're using the user details here, I will uh, make the changes over here. So just below the entity, I will write an annotation that tells Hibernate that this entity is actually cacheable. So the way I do that is by using the annotation at cacheable. So this, this annotation tells Hibernate that this is a cacheable entity and this has to be considered for caching. Now, the second thing that I can do here is I can also mention what is the configuration for this cache. Uh, this is also called as the caching strategy. So what I'll do is I will write another annotation in which I can configure the caching strategy. So I use the annotation called cache. And uh, this is actually, if you import, it's a org.hibernate.annotation. So it's a Hibernate specific annotation. So this cache annotation takes in a parameter called usage. Now I'll say usage equals now, there is, a, like with all other uh, configuration and annotations, even this can be supplied values by using an enumeration. And the enumeration here is called cache concurrency strategy. Okay, now this cache concurrency strategy has a few values. We have um, read only, read write, non strict read write and transactional. So what these values do is they tell Hibernate how they want, how you want the cache to be configured as. Now read only is the basic level of caching. What it does is it assumes that the data that you have is read only data and your application is only going to read data. It's not going to write any data to the database. Uh, and this is for this entity, of course. So for user details, if we specify read only, then Hibernate is going to assume that the data that you have for user details is only something that you fetch from the database in your application. The application does not write any user details data back to the database. So this is the simplest of the caches. What Hibernate does is it just pulls up all the data. Uh, once, once you have the data in the cache, it's not going to worry about whether the application modified it or not, whether it has to you know uh, clean the cache, update the cache. All those things are not going to be checked. 
it's going to assume that it's a read-only data and so once the data is there in the cache hibernate is not going to worry about it it's going to just supply value to the application from the cache itself the next thing is uh, read write this is where you're telling hibernate that no i don't have read-only data i have read write data the application might write data back to the database for this entity and now what hibernate does is it keeps track of what updates have happened and if there is an update it updates the cache accordingly so all these optimizations are done by hibernate there's also a non-strict read write where it doesn't really strictly you know uh, enforce this kind of a check so there is a chance that you might read something from the cache that was updated somewhere else but uh, read write is is pretty strict it makes sure that uh, you don't you don't read any dirty data that was updated in another part of the application or in another application that's using the same cache transactional is the strictest of all it uh, makes sure that uh, a cache is on a transaction to transaction basis it's actually good to go for a read write because in the in the case of transactional you're not achieving a significant benefit when it comes to having a second level cache so in this example what i'll do is i'll do a read only uh, option because i'm not writing any data back to the database i'm just pulling up uh, the user details twice so i'm just going to go with read only and uh, press save so these are the two configuration annotations that we use for entities one is i'm making the entity as cacheable and the second thing is i'm using a add cache annotation of hibernate to mention what is the caching strategy that I need for this entity. So of course it goes without saying, different entities can be configured in different ways. We can make an entity cacheable or not. And of course, once you make the entity cacheable, you can configure how exactly the caching is happening. Okay, so now that we have set these two files, well, now we are ready to run this again. So now, you know, this is the result of our previous run. It ended up in two selects of the same code. I will run again and let's see how many selects it comes up with. Okay, there you go. It's just run one select. And the reason for that is after the first select, what has what Habinate has done is it has added this user detail object of primary key one. It's added this object into our second level cache, which is the EH cache implementation. And now that we close the session, the object is still in the second level cache. And now when I open a new session and I'm asking uh, Hibernate to get the same object, instead of directly going to the database first, it checks the second level cache and sees if the object is already there. Now that it finds the object, the second select is not there. It pulls it up from the second level cache and it assigns to the user. And that's the reason why we do not see the second select statement here. So this is uh, this is a high level overview of how you can use cache in order to minimize the you know the number of round trips to the database.